by now I've gotten the boat home, cut out all the rot and removed all of the delaminated wood and old plywood and everything. And now it's time to remove the transom plate. I had to pry that sucker off because it was attached with 5200. But if you look at it, it's obvious that the rot is from the inside out and not a result from the seawater getting into the boat, which just reinforces the fact that the water came in through the leaking transom cap. Here you can see the cavity where the two three quarter inch pieces of marine plywood transom fit into. And so now it's time to start making the transom. So I bought some plywood, marine plywood. I encapsulated it all in epoxy and fiberglass it over. And yeah, that's in my kitchen because it's cold outside. I made a template. I cut it out around for the transom plate. And then I cut it to fit after putting some fiberglass on the edges and everything. And that's the part that's going to be exposed. Here you can see I've got it attached in where it goes. It fits in with the tabbing. You can see the plywood is epoxied in with the tabbing that remained there that I cut around. And if you look down on the corners, you can see there's a hollow space. And that got filled with some uh, two-part structural foam right here, <clears throat> which was uh, eight pounds density, which is super strong. So that's a transom. I got a new transom on the interior part, at least the rough part. Here you can see some 10 ounce fiberglass where I'm tying the tabbing in before I fiberglass the entire thing into place. And if you remember, there's that angled cavity between the transom and the back of the boat. I cut all new pieces on that. I cut all that out of uh, laminated veneer lumber, LVL, that I had from doing some work around my house. Here you can see it's dadoed in, and that's all received numerous coats of epoxy and fiberglass on it. And that fits in there, and that replaced all that rotted wood that was in there that separated the two, uh, the transom from the false hole, basically. And that all got epoxied in, and a few screws here and there for acting as clamps. And then I had to actually start to rebuild the area for the transom plate. You can see where I mocked up, that's tapered because that's V-shaped coming down from the top of the transom to the bottom there. It's all now starting to come together and you can see where I filled in and I've reconstructed the entire area around the transom plate. And as you can see, there's some holes where all the transom bolts bolt through. And what you do is you oversize, you drill those holes oversize, you fill them with thick and epoxy. Once they cure, you drill the appropriate sized hole, and that creates a sleeve or an analyst in there so water can never penetrate into the epoxy. You chamfer it, you make it so uh, it's got a little recessed area, and then you put those o-rings in there and that squeezes in between the bolts and the transom plate and the transom itself and creates a watertight seal. So a little bit more epoxy and fill in the gaps and the fiberglass and all that and there you've got a exterior transom plate all good to go. Here you can see I put a little foam there in the cavity in the false transom is what I'm calling it and that fills that up and waterproofs it and makes it nice and strong. The corners of the boat were weak. They had been sanded through and had some crush damage. So that also got filled up with some of that eight pound density structural two part polyurethane foam. Filled that up and that stuff is wicked strong and it's good to go. Here you can see there's a little bit of a lip um, at the top of the transom. I had to fill that in. I had to do a lot of miscellaneous. Those are the scuppers. I had to redo the scuppers, made my own tube there, epoxied that in, fiberglassed all that in, so the water that gets inside the hole can get outside the hole. Uh, here you can see where there's a mount for a rear cleat on the back of the boat, and that's all been uh, epoxied in and, and waterproofed. 
and that goes through the LVLs that was in there before. So that's super strong. That might be one of the strongest parts of the entire boat itself. This is the piece where I had to fill in that um, at the top of the transom where it didn't match up because the way I built the boat is different than the way the original designer did. The way he did it kind of sucked because it ended up getting rotted and I had to replace it. So that makes it all the way flush up to the top, nice and smooth. There's where my stern light is going to go through. You can see the hole there for the wire. And that's all filled in. And that got sanded, smooth, fared. Uh, 18 ounces of fiberglass went on that out, outside lip there. And there you can see now I've got a nice working area for the transom cap that I'm going to be putting on there. That's going to be nice and smooth and flush, uh, strong. I like to stand on it when I fish sometimes. So there will be no problems with it being strong or will it ever get any rot again because it's completely encapsulated in fiberglass and epoxy. Now coming to the inside of the transom, where this is above the transom plate, and that's where the steering arm has to swing. So I had to cut all that out and mock all that up. And it looks like that took about 10 minutes, but that took months off and on of mocking all that up and putting all that in there and digging all that out. Here's the exhaust there for the turbo. The water comes out of the turbo and the exhaust goes down that through the transom plate. So that all swings. That's all custom. And that transom's really important because it holds up the half part of the boat motor because the front of the boat motor is the only part with engine mounts. And throughout all of this, you can see the thickened epoxy, the analysts where the water cannot get through if it leaks in through the bolt seal into the plywood. Very important. There's the scupper. It's already been fiberglass and smoothed out and everything. You can see where the fiberglass um, has been applied on the lip around the engine box, which water comes in and drains around that. And the, the inside of the transom is just about done. But if, if you see that, and if you remember, the V, the transom has a V in it. So if I put a bolt from the inside to the outside, there's no way a washer is going to fit flush on both surfaces. So I had to angle the interior portion of the transom with some thickened epoxy, which is just epoxy and fume silica and some micro balloons. So that way, when I put a bolt on there, the washer fits flush, and then I can put a nut on there, and that gives me evil, even clamping pressure. And this is significant for the long-term well-being of the boat. So water's not going to be able to get through there. It's going to sit flush. I'm going to get even pressure, and I'm going to make it well worth my investment in my time there. And right here, you can see I, I did some a little bit of fiberglass work on the stringers. They were solid. Mounted all that up. That's the tilt and trim. And after, I think at this point, I've had the boat for a couple of years. It's time for well-deserved beer. And then I'm going to move on to some miscellaneous fiberglass repairs on the boat before I start tackling the engine, which is a significant amount of time, effort, and as you guessed it, money. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, help me out. Doesn't cost you anything. And in the future, when I get enough viewership, I might actually even make a little money to help recoup some cash in my pocket. It's going to be awesome.